<laughs> Thanks for coming, everybody. Uh, nice to see you. Um, today, I'm talking about how to write an essay. Specifically, I have the examination in mind. A lot of the material that I found online refers to coursework. Uh, but it doesn't hurt for that. So what I've done on the VLE, the school VLE for English in year 12, is I've uploaded some links. There's one to the University of Leicester, one to the University of New South Wales, and one is a blog kind of thing, not a blog, a forum that I want to tell you a little bit about. Okay? When I first drove to Stratford, I thought it would be a good idea to do it without a map. And on that day, I found out why it's really important to plan everything you do. And planning is one of the two things I had behind me on the board. One of two things that's repeated three times in advice I've read about essay planning. The other being answer the question. But let's start with planning. The forum, not blog, the forum that I referred to, and I've got the link to on the VLE if you want to look at it, really tickled me. It's a sixth former, and he's basically saying, I need help writing English literature essays. My English literature essays, they're kind of rubbish. Can you help me? And someone comes and says, well, you should plan. And he says, yeah, I, I, uh, I don't really like planning. Uh, can we get more advice? And someone else says, why don't you try planning? And then a third person comes and says, plan, 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 which is why I've got it on the board behind me. The simple fact is, everybody, that in my experience, A, all students try to avoid planning, and B, the best students always plan. If you want to get a A star between AS and A2, you really do need to be planning, and you need to find the best way to plan, and you need to practice your planning. You need to make it your good habit. All right? So, how do you go about planning? Well, you start off with the essay title, of course. So, answering the question and planning very much dovetail. You pick out the key words. That's something you've been doing, I'm sure, with all of your teachers. Picking out the key words, be it in a highlight, be it writing those words and phrases out on the actual paper in front of you. Whatever it is, you've got to bring them to life. Because they are going to give you what needs to be the emphasis of your essay. What an essay is, everybody, is a bit like a sentence. Yeah, An old-fashioned definition of a sentence is a single and complete thought, full stop. Now, no one can ever quite get it right. No grammarians quite agree about how to define a sentence. But in a way, that is what an essay is. Right? Your answer to the question, it's single and it's complete. Everything in the essay contributes a bit to it. Now, the introduction and conclusion are distinct bits, and I'll talk about those distinctly. But in between times, you have a series of steps, and each of those steps is building up the quality of evidence for your answer. So when you set off... When you set off on the journey to Stratford, you have to know it's Stratford that you're going to, and you need to have looked at a map. Now, this, of course, is pre-SatNav, and one of the reasons people worry about SatNavs is because they're stopping people thinking. Yeah? I think it was the Geographical Society last week was expressing its concern that nobody can use a map anymore, and they want to bring that back, get those good habits about our awareness of how we map the world back into people's minds. So imagine yourself over on pre sat now. You've got to find your way to Stratford. First of all, you've got the purposefulness of going to Stratford. You know when you've got to Stratford because you'll get to the Royal Shakespeare Company's Theatre and you'll think, ka-ching, I'm in for the play. If you don't get to Stratford, you'll think, I've gone wrong. The problem with writing an essay, of course, is you might not be quite so certain that you've arrived at the right point. But it's really quite simple. If you've picked out the keywords of the essay and you're all used to the essay formats, you've practiced them, and the formats don't change very much from one examination in a year to another, you know how to attack it. You know what the keywords are that you need to keep talking about. And so you should have a clear idea of what makes for a good essay answer. And the rest of the material, as I say, is marshaled 
to support it. Now, I could talk about the introduction first, but I think it's best for us to do a little bit more on what that plan is going to contain. Now, bear in mind that plans are not performative. I mean by that, they're not you showing off what you can do to somebody, unlike the essay, which is you showing off your skills of organising and marshalling arguments of your knowledge of the text, your ability to analyse and so on. What you're doing in a plan is just for you. So it's got to suit you. I'll tell you what I would do. You can do your own thing, but it needs to be something like what I'm talking about. All right. So the way I'll go, everyone, I'd pick out the keywords. I'd know which texts are relevant to that question, of course. But probably within that, then, you've got to make choices. So if it were the poetry, for instance, uh, the Carol Ann Duffy, you'd have to decide which poems am I going to do, how many, and so on. If you're doing film studies, and you've studied, say, three comedies or four comedies and you need to answer on two, you've got to choose which two are best suited to this specific question. And then once you've made that choice, you've decided it's the best fit, then what inside that text are you picking on? If it's a film, you're probably talking about the macro. You're talking about how the narrative works, how it works as an example of the genre, the characterization, the representation of different types of people and so on. If it's a literary text, you're thinking, right, which bits of this am I going to be talking about? In the Duffy, which specific poems? And then within that, which aspects of the poem are we picking on to illustrate different dimensions of our writing? If it's a novel, it may well be that you want to think about the end. But where else along the way is significant? What are the significant moments? Now, that's part of your revision, that you've decided in a general sense what the significant moments are. But when it comes to the essay, answer the question, you've got to make sure that what you're picking on is going to be relevant, it's going to be apposite, it's going to allow you to do that A-grade kind of work, of which I'll say more shortly when I talk about Pearl. Okay? So what I would do, everyone, I'd kind of brainstorm it. I'd try and get down all the major ideas I can think of now, the crucial thing I would do is I would get in some note form what it is I'm going to refer to. OK, so I'd name my poems, I'd name my films, whatever it is. And I'd get that reference in maybe a page number, maybe a line number, depending what works for you. So if it's an image that you want to use, write down a word or phrase that's going to remind you of that image. What you do not want to do is come back to the plan and go, hmm? What was I thinking of seven minutes ago? Yeah, the plan should be full enough that you don't need to pause as you write the essay. Now, some people say spend five minutes or ten minutes planning. I would not be able to do that in such little time. For me, I think about a third of the time or 40% of the time would be more realistic. Now, it might be, you're younger than me, it might be you're faster moving than I am when it comes to these plans. And I'm happy if that's the case. Don't shortchange the plan. Don't spend 10 minutes on think, right, I've reached the 10 minute limit, now I've done my planning because it's 10 minutes, then start writing and then have to stop and start planning again. It should be like the map, the map to Stratford. You should have the whole thing ready to go. So your thinking and reflecting process, you may be polishing it, you may be tweaking it, maybe adding in a new quote you think of, oh yeah, that's especially good for what I'm trying to say here. But basically, you've mapped your route through the essay. All right, so you've got your keywords, you come up with where your sources of evidence are. You've got some way of noting for yourself what you're going to be talking about, which techniques of the author or the filmmaker or whatever are you going to be identifying. All right. Then you get it in an order. So what's the best order of that series of points? Okay. Don't hang around on it too much. 
it probably doesn't matter that much most of the time but there should hopefully be a sequence that makes sense for you it's going to build that argument are we happy to there okay the next step then is to turn a numbered sequence of points into an essay if you have decided what you think you should now be able to write the introduction the introduction will directly engage the question and will use the words of the question but it won't be a sentence long it will probably be four or five sentences many students don't say enough in the introduction now i'd like you to admire my missoni tie everybody do we like i've got to say i love missoni, I love missoni. <laughs> right now i don't know quite how i did see a missoni exhibition or part of an exhibition at the vna uh, about a year ago and they uh, depicted some of the design drawings and i saw some of the machinery that they're using to weave this. I thought it was absolutely remarkable. But as you can imagine, in a tie like this, a fabric like this, there are lots of different shades. Some of the differences are quite subtle in them, all right? And it's only when all the threads come together that you end up creating the pattern, right? Now, this is a brilliant metaphor, I'm sure you'll agree, for writing an introduction to an essay. <laughs> right, so what you've got, everyone, in your introduction, you've got a series of strands and in your conclusion, you've got a piece of fabric. Now, what I'm getting at there is, you should tell the reader, I'm going to be doing A, B, C, D, maybe even E, F. But don't literally say I'm going to. That's a bit naff in terms of style. All right? You shouldn't even really need to say, this essay will, although that's not a bad formula. This essay will establish that there are four significant matters. You could do that. But it's better everyone, if you can just make it happen objectively. There are four chief areas of concern, blah, blah, blah. So you need to hear that distinction, everyone. You're trying to make it as objective sounding as you can. But the crucial thing is to establish your strands. So the examiner sees, ah, this is a multiple essay. It's not trying to say there's one simple, straightforward answer to this issue. It's saying, I'm going to follow a number of takes, a number of strands, okay? So to go back to the text choices, each text should be illustrating some different aspect of the answer. When you set off, you should know poem A is doing this work for me, poem B, this work, poem C, this other work, poem D, further work still. And some of it can be and also, but not much. Avoid words like again and also. Now in the sheet that I've given you, and which I'll make available in the VLE, it's a list of linking words and phrases, and it's good to have those in your head, ready to call on. I would tend to say avoid the further mores and the in addition. What they are tempting students to do is just say and. And another thing like this is, whereas what you're looking for is a difference, you're looking to establish a line and say, on the other hand, in other circumstances. This doesn't always apply. So you're looking for the strands, the lines, which are going to make your essay rich okay so there everybody all right then so we've got an introduction which naturally flows from your plan what you're following then for the bulk of the essay is pearl now you, if you go online and look at this i've seen peter i've seen peer i've seen any number of variations pee -E, super pee -E, this kind of thing doesn't matter in a way i like pearl for a particular reason I'll explain. So to remind you of the formula run, Perl is P for point, E for evidence, A for analysis, R for response, and L for link. Now, your P's should come easily from your plan. 
you've got a series of points that you want to make, your ease should come easily, see what I did, from your plan. All right, you've got your quotes, you've got your evidence, all right. It doesn't have to be a quote, it can be a reference to structure or what have you, but you've got evidence. Now, the AR is almost always where the gold nuggets lie. It's the thing that students find hardest to do, that teachers often find hardest to teach, and examiners are scrabbling around to find. Where is the really close analysis of a scene or a sequence in a film, of a line or two lines in a poem, of a speech in a play, of a chapter in a novel or a paragraph, whatever it might be? Right? Where do we get into that close analysis? Now, analysis, everyone, of course, is when you take things apart, isn't it? You explain how they're working, how they're creating their meaning and effect. And that's the main thing you're going to be doing in your essay. Your essays will be cultural criticism, film analysis, literature analysis. They are not works of sociology or history. So bring in context by all means to enrich your answer. And it'd be disappointing if there wasn't a sense of context. But the main thing we're looking for is for you to be analysing how writers do it, how filmmakers make it. All right? Now, I'm going to put up on the board of run one clear, straightforward example of Pearl. It's not one of them myself. You already know I've got that King Lear one on the board behind me. Right. You knew I would let you down. I'm back in the room. Okay, so behind me on the board of rum is um, a pearl. Steph, can I invite you to read the quotation? Okay, Tash, can you read us the pearl? My head's in the way. <laughs> My head's in the way. <laughs> you want me to read all of it? Please. The oxymoron of silent spoke combines with the smile like thunder. <laughs> Similarly, the smile. <laughs> like thunder to convey the notion that silent prayer has power and that you don't need volume to be effective. Okay, we'll pause there and run. Thanks. <laughs> All right. The paradox implies how even silent prayer can have the same force as one of the loudest occurrences in nature. And then it goes on and run. The writer is drawn on biblical imagery of the power of the divine. She uses the enjambment before thunder in order to emphasise the stark shock between it and the silent prayer. All right. Now, that is the kind of paragraph that we're ideally hoping to see in your essay. <clears throat> if you've been following the advice, the overall, the overarching advice, it will be specifically in the service of answering the question. All right, so each paragraph will begin with something that hopefully isn't too literal. <clears throat> you don't want to keep referring to the essay title, but it should be clear why it's relevant to that essay title. All right. As you go through, you make your point, you provide your quote, and then you're providing the analysis primarily of how the writer uses language to achieve effects. Ideally, too, everyone, for literature students, you're talking about 
form and structure some of the time. Okay, harder to talk about form and structure. But as a clue, when you're writing about a poem, make sure you're using those poetry critical words. Likewise for drama, that you're imagining it being staged, you're imagining the words being spoken by actors and so on. Yeah? That okay to there, everyone? So that's what it looks like. An introduction, then a series of these paragraphs, each dealing with a significant new point. It's better to have a number of short, tight paragraphs than it is these long, extended ones. All right? Generally, the long, extended ones are giving away that you've got off the point. That's not really a point. Do we need that? It just sort of, that's straight Yeah. That's more, what we've got here is more the AR of Pearl, yeah? So, so what I'm giving you is the EAR, if you like. So I, I'm, I haven't bothered with the point that will come with the essay title, yeah? So hopefully it's staying relevant, yeah? Where does they link? Do they link it back to the title or link it to the next Well, funny enough, people who use Pearl sometimes argue about just this thing. I don't think you should be needing to link it back to the title. Some people make their paragraphs kind of circular to be really safe. In effect, they're, they're saying at the end of each paragraph, I have shown in this paragraph. I think that's a bit ploddy for you. And if you're confident, if you've got a plan and each point is relevant to it, you shouldn't need to do that. But if you can link through to a line of argument, that really makes your work fluent and sophisticated and impressive. It shows you're, you're following a line of argument. It's not just there is this and there is that. There is this, but this other example, this poem, whatever, illustrates a different principle. It's getting those kind of nice linkings through. So for instance, if uh, in the Duffy lecture I was talking about death, this poem treats death in a very somber and intimate fashion. But when we look at the deaths at the end of Stafford Girls High, I was talking about that last week, it feels quite different. It's that sort of thing, I think, makes for your greater fluency in your essay. All right, so the final part of run is the conclusion where you've got your perfectly made fabric. Now, what do I mean by your perfectly made fabric? Students often find this rather confusing don't leave themselves enough time to do themselves credit. And I felt that on Martin essay this week. The student had made a series of good points, but then she'd done a one-sentence conclusion. Don't do that. These crucial things are a plan, answer the question. <clears throat> Next priority for me, have a conclusion that prioritises and synthesizes. What do I mean? I'm going to tell you. <laughs> to synthesize means to draw it together, right? You're bringing together your points that you've made. So those major points you've established in the essay, you're summarizing them. So feel the difference from the introduction. In the introduction, you've set up what the strands are, and now you're saying, right, this is what it all looks like together. And the other word I've put in there is prioritisation or ranking. Which are the most important points? Okay. An example of that, everyone, would be when a text is funny. Often students ignore the humour part of text because they're, they're trying to be really serious in an exam. But an awful lot of texts that you study, be it films or poems or plays, what have you, are funny. Now, you, if the overarching feeling in response to X theme is it makes you laugh, say that. All right? So think to yourself at the end, that was just one example, think to yourself at the end, what is most important? And if you want, go for the two most important things or even the three most important things. I would lead up to say, have the form, the simple formula in your head. The main thing is, the key part of my answer turns out to be. Now you can use the formula in conclusion then, 
Now, the reason I like the word then is if you've done your essay right, if it's a sequence of points from the introduction, then the step, step, step through, it should feel natural to say, in conclusion, then. What I've said is what the essay has established, all right? In answer to this question is, and again, you bring back in the terms of the question and make sure there's a check on yourself when you do that planning. When you do those keywords of run, do all of the keywords and not some of them. And there you have your beautiful pattern, your perfect map, you're in Stratford, you're sitting on the grass waiting for the matinee to begin. <laughs>